It's been over two years since SEBI paved the way for REITs and INVITS to be introduced in the Indian market and since then both the regulator and government have tried to sweeten the deal for developers and infra players to take the plunge. While five infrastructure companies are all set to list INVITS within this financial year, there are still no takers for REITs. CNBC TV 18's Kevin Lee and Prashant Nair find out just why. I am very, very optimistic that during this financial year, INVITS will take up, REITs will take up. Till date, however, only half of the SEBI chairman's wish list remains fulfilled. Five infrastructure companies have gotten the in-principle approval to list via the INVITS route and are looking to raise up to 17,000 crore rupees by the end of this financial year. The idea of doing the INVITS is definitely to deleverage the balance sheet in terms of the debt size what the company is having on its book today. However, no real estate developer has taken the plunge as of yet. While it was widely reported that DLF would be the developer behind India's first REIT listing, the company is first looking to complete restructuring of its rental business before it makes any commitments. First step, which is disinvestment into an existing entity which has leased and completed assets, is already going on. Only after that, that one will have to reveal the first the name and then of course the amount. REITs and INVITS follow the same concept and structure. Why then have INVITS been so much more popular than REITs? Experts suggest that the primary reason may be the nature of real estate assets in the country vis-a-vis -vis infrastructure projects. Even today you see a lot of infrastructure players already operating in the SPV models. So moving from there to INVIT model is relatively easier because you can transfer the shares of the company. As compared to that, if you look at the real estate players, typically you have the property which is situated in the SPV where there are a number of other properties. To move that property, as we spoke the last time, you have a capital gains tax implication when you transfer the asset as compared to transferring the shares. And second, I think the bigger hurdle actually is the stamp duty. Another factor is the geographical spread of infrastructure projects as opposed to real estate projects. Overall, the market for invit or the infrastructure is more pan india your players which are operating across india whereas at the REIT level it tends to be more fragmented you have uh, more real estate players which are focused on local markets or local states this is why experts believe that it is far more likely that a private equity player may opt for a REIT listing before a developer does since a pe player can invest in assets across the country leading to a more diverse portfolio either way it is unlikely that this will happen within this fiscal year. With Kevin Lee, Prashant Nair in Mumbai.